Hi guys, I'm Danny West and you're back with another episode of The Soapbox, your patient education station. And this week's variation, we're continuing on with the hip theme and kind of like we did with the core, we're going to start with a like an exercise lying down, kind of get the muscle woken up and then we're going to apply it to something functional in standing. Um, this cycle I love, I do it in my own workouts. It's one of probably my top five things that I give to clients um, because it usually sucks so bad. <laughs> so most people struggle with this, um, but part of the glute that we're working on today is kind of what's called your inferior glute. So the bottom part of your butt cheek, basically. And that should kind of fire as soon as we step up on say a stair, if we go for a hike, as soon as we heel strike uh, when we're walking, that part of the glute should fire. Usually it's on a bit of a holiday, especially if we've had any lower extremity injuries on that side. Um, so again, we're gonna train it lying down, kind of get it woken up and then see what it looks like in standing using our little hip trick or our cue where we have kind of tape across the level of our hips just to kind of give us a better visual. So you're gonna need something somewhat kind of squishy. Um, this particular exercise is one of my favorite Lisa Howell exercises. So she's a physio out of Australia. She taught me this one. Um, I love it just to start to get, again, that very specific bottom part of the glute firing. Uh, if you don't have this, you could use like a pillow, just something we can press our heel into and get a little bit of feedback. The nice thing, if it's a ball um, and it has a bit of a squish to it, it can move around, which again tells us a bit about stability or lack thereof. So you're going to come to lay down. Now I've set up the chair here as kind of like a makeshift wall, just so you can see it. So just know you would do this up against a wall. With your heel in the center of the ball, I'm setting myself up so I'm at about 90 degrees knee and hip uh, flexion. And now here's where you get to kind of literally feel your own butt cheek here. So take kind of the pads of the fingers and not on the leg. We want to be on the bottom part of the butt cheek here. I'm going to do a light pressure. If you push too hard, it's, it's kind of hard to feel. So have kind of a light pressure. But the point is we want to push into the heel and as soon as we push into the heel, we should feel the lower part of the butt cheek on the right fire. I'm going to let off and again, a little push and fire. And it takes some getting used to to kind of feel. Even if you're like Danny, I'm not sure if I'm feeling anything, even just trying to picture that bottom part of the glutes firing can help um, get that motor pattern going. So do a few little pushes. If you have poor stability, you might notice this will move around a little bit. Again, do about eight to 10. I'm gonna switch other side, feeling the left butt cheek, centering the heel on the ball, push, and I wanna feel the left one fire. And for me, my left is a little delayed. I can't quite feel it as well. And I do have a history of some left-sided injury. When we start to take that into standing, we're almost gonna picture it like someone's about to poke us in the bottom part of the tush um, with a sharp nail or something, um, like a fingernail. Um, and that's gonna give us a little pep, again, from underneath to kind of light up that glute. So you can do this on a stair, but sometimes a stair is actually like too high to start with. And it's gonna mix in the skill of a split squat into stair stepping, okay? So little review on the split squat. Again, if you haven't looked at that video, um, do that one first. This is again, meant to be a progression of that one. So a split squat, we basically have our weight on the front and back leg. We wanna keep our hips level as we go down and up. And we want to keep our hips level as we go up and down a stair or as we go for a walk. We don't want any sinking in through the hip. So at home, again, if you can 
have a setup where you have a mirror in front of you, like a portable mirror or something, um, either a small box, stack a couple of textbooks, start with something just smaller than a stair. So I have this little um, box here that we use in the clinic. It's definitely lower than a stair, but higher than a textbook. So I'm basically gonna start in this, basically a mini split squat. I'm gonna again, feel my own butt cheek here, and I'm gonna try to mimic what I felt as I pushed into the ball through my heel. And I'm gonna step up on the stair, and then down, and again, and down. And again, I'm trying to even just think about, can I kind of fire this feeling from up underneath my hip as I step? The other piece is, don't you know that I'm watching, are my hips level as I step up, or do they want to kind of sink as I come up? See, can you keep them level throughout? And then maybe do a little balance at the top. Switch sides. Left foot up. Hips level. I'm going to try to, again, it's almost like someone's poking me underneath. But don't go so much so that you tuck the butt. We don't want to tuck the butt under as we step up. I'm still in that neutral pelvis. Again, 8,000 things to think about, right? So a lot can go wrong. This is why it's so important to retrain this. So do your hips stay totally level or is there a little bit of a sink? You want to master this first. Hands can go opposite. Again, if that's your biggest issue, don't worry about the choreography. Get comfortable with that first. So in a workout, I might do about eight step ups, go into some of those other hip exercises that I did, and then come back to this again. Once you get really good with the small stair, we want to try it on something a bit bigger. Now, normally I would like to have something stair height, but again, I don't have anything like that in the clinic. This is a Pilates long box, um, so it is a bit higher than a stair. So I would say this is a pretty big jump, so I'd go maybe small, stair as your medium, and then kind of a bigger box. But it's the same concepts, is can I, Get that glute to recruit as I step up and down. And again, kind of keeping an eye on my hips, making sure they stay level. I'm watching in the mirror right now. And then I'm gonna do the other side. And sometimes people overdo it and they hike at the top. So again, level throughout. You can use the fingers on the bottom part of the glute. You need that little cue. It helps me. Again, keeping it at like that nice kind of even speed. Working up eight, you can work up faster. Then at the top, don't you know, you could hold in your single leg squat. Maybe try your floor touches up there. A little different when you're up high. And I'm on something that's squishy instead of the floor, which also is a little bit of a balance component. Again, I'm going to try left. Do my step ups. Hold up there. Find that slight little knee bend, keeping that knee and hip alignment. Couple floor touches, and back down. And you can cycle through. You could do, again, go back to the ball press. You could do some split squats on the floor, go into your step ups. But just know the way that I've done this series, we started the hip stuff a couple weeks ago. Start with that and then work your way up. I'd never just teach somebody step ups. 
if they couldn't explain to me hip alignment or glute recruitment. So um, yeah, so that's a really good one. And again, if you're doing any step ups or box work, Olivia Newton-John type of uh, workout, that's what you wanna watch for. Because every time you step, if your hips are doing the dip, um, again, you're just encouraging that poor loading through the hip, that poor movement pattern. Um, this is a great one to start working on bigger ranges. And notice we haven't even got to jumps yet. So if your split squats, your hip stability with standing and lunges isn't so great, it doesn't make sense to load it even more and do a jump. It's really gonna break down if you don't have it super solid here, okay? So add that one in. This is one of my favorites. You'll probably see this in some of my workout Wednesdays. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Happy glute recruiting.